Hey guys, what's up? It's Robbie with Upworld Games, and we're talking about all things Tom Clancy's The Division. We're going to be going over a recent podcast which revealed a lot more than you think. And then also, if you missed it, check out PS1 gameplay of The Division. Man, I had a ton of fun creating this video, so if you missed it, please be sure to check it out in the description below. So hot it'll light your ass on fire. And by all means, use the video guide in the description to skip ahead to the news you seek. So what I have here in my hands is a transcript of the recent podcast for The Division. Amy Spode, who's from Ubisoft Massive, got together and sat down with the composer and the sound designer for Tom Clancy The Division. They had a lot to talk about, but I'm going to go over uh, the most meaningful details. Of course, you can check out the full 40-minute long podcast. It's really, really great because it really does show how Ubisoft is uh, full of a bunch of human beings. I really love the humor in their podcast, so be sure to check out the full podcast by following the link in the description. But guys, uh, I'm going to start out with news about the actual release day. It is looking really good because of what they had to say right here. So, uh, I think it was two and a half years ago. I started on the first chapter. Uh, that was basically the first iteration of music for the game. Uh, and it followed my initial gut feeling and the direction I'd set up. And I wrote sort of an, an album of music. And then I gave it to key people in the studio and said, just listen to this, tell me what you think, let's see where we're going after this. And then after a couple of months I started on chapter two, based on the uh, feedback and whatever happened during production. And right now I'm on chapter four, and this will be the final chapter. <laughs> final and chapter. Most of the music uh, in previous chapters will not be used at all. So this was so extremely important to the release date of The Division because they are on chapter four, the final chapter of their musical composition for The Division. They're finishing up on it right now, which means that is very good news for a solid 2015 release date for Tom Clancy's The Division. Of course, coupled with the fact uh, that recently Devin Supertramp and Corridor Digital finished production of a Division uh, short miniseries. Uh, it's really looking good for a, I think, a holiday 2015 release date for Tom Clancy The Division. I was thrilled to hear that music is basically all ready to go for The Division. Oh man, we're getting close. So they also mentioned something called systemic music. Let's have a listen. I guess I guess that's the thing that presents the biggest challenge. Like you were talking about, you know, scripted music before. Like we we try to keep everything open since it, it is an open world game. So the music that's why the music has to kind of adapt based on whether that's exploration or if you're in a mission or if you're, you know, doing something on the side or if you're in the dark zone and there's all these uh, all these criteria to uh, to consider. Um, I remember this one moment from the backstage demo where you could see um, you could kind of you were work, walking on the streets of New York. You mm -hmm. know, it was snowing and it was kind of dark, and you saw in the distance you saw the flames, and well, you started to hear this little kind of almost cleaners theme uh, kind of creeping in, and it just it was the, I almost got, got like a weird. I mean, combined with all us, uh, you know, favor of 80s synthesizers, I got almost like a, almost a Blade, Run a Blade Runner-esque um, experience. Uh, so it was pretty cool. Some people don't realize how important music and sound is to a game. It is the, I think, the emotional feeling you get uh, from the game when just exploring the world. You know, it sounds like they're taking cues from John Williams. Uh, when you see Darth Vader on the screen in Star Wars, you hear that Empire sound. You hear the Empire music. And then when you see the cleaners on the screen, you get a theme song of sorts for the cleaners. So, you know, 
just when you're sitting at your computer and you're not playing the division maybe you hear that song you immediately have an emotional reaction you're starting to think about the cleaners you're starting to think about how menacing they are and if they're programmed really well and they work right and they are a menacing threat in the division it's likely just hearing that song may eventually give you goosebumps within the world of the division i think that's what they're going for here and it sounds like again they're really really going for that john williams askew type music theme which is wonderful to hear because star wars is just one of the best uh, in terms of music and sound designs. So it looks like sound design is in good hands. So what about other types of music in the game? Well, this is what they have to say about that. I was thinking of, you know, music uh, that could come from radios, uh, music that c could come from- oh, Okay, no, we have a question about that. Let's- uh... Okay, yeah. uh, we, we, have a, we have music coming from musicians playing inside the base of operations. Yes. Uh, we have music coming from, you know, our indoor life system um, and stuff like that. So I think this mechanic is going to work like much like Watch Dogs in the way that you go out in the world and you look for musical tunes to collect. A variety of them I think will be on offer. They didn't say what type of music we could expect, if it's going to be rock and roll, uh, pop or hip hop or something like that, but I would expect it to be radically different from the movie themed music we heard in the E3 presentation. So I think it's gonna be uh, quite different. We might be uh, getting rock and roll music. I hope we get some really cool tunes in that regard. I don't know if you're gonna be able to save them to some sort of device and turn it up when the uh, action heats up or something like that. I really am not too sure if you're gonna be able to go, boop, I wanna activate this kick-ass rock and roll song. Not too sure if that's how it's going to work, but the good news is the music is going to be extremely dynamic in the game. When you're roaming around in the open world, you're going to get something that's appropriate. Then when you go into a firefight, it's going to get really, really tense. So uh, it sounds like they're very in tune to the emotion of music. So Red Bull Gaming did a piece on all things The Division. And I read through it and then I got to the part about user generated content. This has never really been covered. Uh, at all. I've never spoken about this and it really got me thinking, will we be seeing user-generated content in Tom Clancy The Division and is it something that you guys would like to see? You know, they've been advertising that the Snowdrop engine is extremely easy to work with. You can just sit down and if you know just the basis of game development, you are good to go. And you know, this is extremely popular user-generated content, user-created content because of GTA Online, they uh, really are pushing the edge in terms of user-created content. It would be so cool, uh, I think, if we saw something like this where you could submit your user-created missions to Ubisoft Massive. They could go ahead and say, okay, we're gonna improve the best of the best in uh, our game and we're gonna publish them so others can enjoy the very best of user-created content. Is this something that you guys would like to see? Of course, it would have to tie well into the story and uh, the narrative of the division. I really don't think we will be seeing user-generated content. Of course, PC modding is up in the air. They haven't really said anything about that, but I don't think we're going to be seeing any PC modding. Uh, but one thing I did want to mention is, you know, Battlefield 4, they're doing the community test environment. Sort of a way to say, hey guys, we've heard your cries. We know you want to be involved somehow with the game's development. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to let... Uh, premium users sign up, opt in, and test out game modes, test out maps before they are released to the public, and then give their feedback uh, through the system. And then they make the changes. You know, the developers go in there, they make the changes, then they publish it. Uh, it would be cool to see this system in the division, you know, for DLCs where premium users or special users would be able to test out maps, test out new game modes, new story missions, whatever, give their feedback. It's a real safe way, actually, to do game development. So maybe, just maybe, we could see a community test environment for the division. But would you guys like to see uh, the CTE or user-generated content in the division? Please let me know what you think and if you think it's appropriate for the division. I have me some top comments. So as always, remember to leave your comments and questions down below because they could end up in the video. Of course, this is a very popular question. Uh, Stained Elite 007 asks, do you think the division will have a graphics downgrade? 
Um, well, we're gonna go off what we know, and what we do know is Jack Frax, he's a big YouTuber, uh, he actually got to play, I believe it was the Xbox One version, and he said that he noticed some more, you know, anti-aliasing issues. Of course, this was work in progress, but he said it was extremely impressive. The graphics were gorgeous. So I would expect minor differences from platform to platform. You know, they are going to have to adjust uh, with each platform. That's the word, adjusting. I don't think it's going to be anything like Watch Dogs. We're talking about a brand new engine, Snowdrop. Uh, it is going to be running only on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Watch Dogs was not running exclusively on the new gen platforms, as I would call them. It was running on, you know, all of them, including the Xbox 360 and PS3. So, uh, when we're talking about downgrades, I don't think it's going to be anything significant. I think the game is going to look drop-dead gorgeous, but they have commented, you know, that the PC version, of course, is going to be the most masterful version in terms of graphics, so you will be able to really crank it up. But, my opinion on that is, that's going to be super expensive. Not everyone of us has the money to upgrade our PC like every six months or something, which seems to be the requirement to really reach that ultra setting. But, either way, it sounds like everyone is going to be happy uh, with how the division is going to turn out. At least, that is what Ubisoft Massive is aiming for. Alright, this is a good one. Nick Jack says, tell us something about factions and clans if you know. Thanks, mate. So, uh, there will be, you know, your base of operations where you can go and interact with NPCs. And, of course, trade, buy, sell, and stuff like that. But, some of these base operations are apparently going to be acting as faction buildings, which is extremely interesting because I would imagine to get into them, you have to be a part of the faction. You have to... Be friendly with that faction and of course you're probably going to have warring factions in fact we know that you know the cleaners which is one faction will be warring with other factions persistently even when you are not playing the game so uh factions are going to be extremely important in the game now for clans yes i would expect a clan system of course you're going to have your squad system in the game this game is really going to be about that co-op experience and finding a dedicated group and squad now uh there's also signs that we will be getting multi-group missions for raids for the in-game content that was mentioned briefly in a blog but there's been no more details about that so i would expect this to be a pretty fully fleshed out co-op experience so my fellow agents there it is your news for tom clancy's the division uh, hopefully we get brand new gameplay of The Division here at E3 2015 in June. I would think that would be June 14th. I don't know. Maybe we'll see something sooner at this point, guys. I really don't know when to expect new gameplay from The Division. It's sort of depressing uh, because I really want to see more. I want to see how these Dark Zones are working. But the good news is from what we just heard from the podcast and stuff like that, it really does sound like they're going to be making this 2015 release date again i would expect fall 2015 that is my estimate sounds pretty good to me of course rainbow six siege is estimated october -ish of 2015 so maybe they will come out at the same time which would be a little bit weird but that's how ubisoft rolls with their releases uh lately but guys thank you so much for watching and remember to stay updated on all things tom clancy's the division right here on open world games and i will see you guys soon enough in mid-crisis new york city